it thread at youtube.com. Thanks so much for joining us for News in 5. I'm Raquel Jones. Popular talk show host Wilmot Perkins is dead. Mr. Perkins, who is commonly referred to as Mutty, was 80 years old. Mr. Perkins died this morning at 1 o'clock at his home in St. Andrew after a brief period of illness. Wilmot Perkins started his career in radio in 1960 and has been the host of the program Perkins Online on Power 106 FM since April 2002. Mr. Perkins also worked with Radio Jamaica for several years as the host of Hotline. You know, Miss Portia, yeah? it seems to me that before people can be talking about fare increases, you owe the public of this country a decent bus service, a passing decent bus service. Very correct. Mr. You have um, never, I, I, when I say you, I'm talking about the minibus operators as a whole, yeah. have never, in so, as I understand it, come anywhere near to providing such a service. You treat people like hogs, you blare the music and you drive dangerously on the road, you're a menace to everybody, and then you turn around and say, look here, we're not really making enough money, and the reason why we are behaving in this way is that we're not making enough money. Late talk show host Wilmot Matty Perkins on RGR's hotline in September 1987. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPM, is today monitoring more closely the air quality in the corporate area due to the Riverton landfill fire. Concern is growing about the city's air quality since the fire started on Tuesday. Several agencies are now involved in efforts to put out the fire and minimize loss. And these include the Jamaica Defense Force, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the National Water Commission, the National Works Agency, the Ministry of Health and the National Fire Brigade. And the Ministry of Education says it will be monitoring the massive smoke nuisance at the Riverton City Dump and its effect on students attending schools in the corporate area and St. Catherine. There are concerns that the smoke could affect students, especially those with respiratory problems. Ministry of Education Ronald Thwaites says regional officers of the ministry are keeping a close watch on the schools. The appropriate region of the ministry has been on the lookout for difficulties which children may be having with respiratory ailments and uh, referring them to the necessary health services. Uh, naturally, we hope that uh, it will clear soon. But the problem is just it is not confined to students, of course. It affects everybody in the community. See? In the meanwhile, the schools remain open and we do the best we can. And yesterday, the administration of Ascot Primary in Portmore, St. Catherine, was forced to ask parents to collect students with asthma and other respiratory illnesses. Opposition spokesman for Transport, Works and Infrastructure Development, Carl Samuda, has blasted the Portia Simpson Miller government, claiming the new administration has failed in delivering on its campaign promises. In a statement last night, Mr. Samuda said the administration is seeking to attribute blame for its failure to the previous JLP administration. Mr. Samuda again criticized the government's proposed Jamaica Emergency Employment Program, Jeep, describing it as a reckless crash work program. They are having severe cash flow problems, yet they are declaring that $4.5 billion have been identified uh, for the funding of aspects of what has yet, is yet to be defined as Jeep. It is clear that they did not have a proper plan uh, going into government. And we go now to news overseas. Education officials in the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS, has taken steps to chart a new course for the sector in a subgrouping. Head of the OECS Reform Unit says a new education strategy will be at the top of three days of talks in St. Lucia. According to Albertine, the countries of the OECS have reached a stage where the policymakers must question whether the subregion is achieving the kind of outputs and results it would like from past strategies. First of all, what we are here to do is to reflect on the past experiences, um, see what has worked, see what hasn't worked, see why they have worked, and to carry the lessons from those past experiences to develop a, a, a new regional strategy. Uh, we are at the point in time where we, um, there is a lot of um, public 
expenditure on education. Governments commit a huge amount of their resources to education, um, amounting sometimes to about 6% of GDP. This is a huge amount. But I don't think that governments, and we ourselves in education, are not satisfied with the results. The OECS Education Strategy Consultation will look at a number of issues, including balancing the focus given to various stages of education. And that's News in 5 for this Friday. I'm Raquel Jones. On behalf of our teams, have a wonderful day. Smile Jamaica, it's morning time, continues. It's red at YouTube.com.